that time I'd already my color had already changed. I was now pale. Because of the prayer things, the Trust me, I was fasting, you. I was no longer eating, my appetite was gone. I couldn't cook for my child anymore. Everything was just a mess. Man, I'm telling man. you, I was praying for him. I would wake up middle of the night and start praying. So I remember that day when he came, I was now looking very different. I was pale, mm. you know. He was like, My sister, if it's prayer and fasting you're doing, you better stop. I love because it. I'm not gonna come back. Eh? I started crying. He was like, uh uh-uh. you are even I'm crying loving, tears. <laughs> You're even crying tears. You have not cried unless the only time I'll come back is only when you cry blood. Welcome to the Safe Space Chats podcast with Madam Speaker. Hi, my name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. On this podcast, we are creating a safe space for ourselves through heart to heart conversations, encouraging others to do the same. Just because we don't believe in the same things, we don't like the same things, we're not interested in the same things, it does not mean that we cannot coexist. So, this is a safe space for you to exist even when you are different and unique. Anyway, welcome to the Safe Space Chairs podcast with Madam Speaker. My name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. If you're joining for the first time, welcome to the family of healing, self love, and motivation. And if you're returning, thank you so much for the continuous love and support. Today, we are going international standard. Because why? I look like an international slave mama. Before we get there, Nem. I need you guys to remember that this episode was sponsored by Scent Studios, our home. And also it was sponsored by Crown Lioness, dressing me up and making me look beautiful. Also sponsored by E2 Hair Studio, making sure that I look like a queen that I am. Okay, apparently I should also mention that I do my own makeup. Shout out to me. And last but not least, big shout out to Hydro Quench for sponsoring us with the water. We really appreciate it. Thank you all sponsors. Now, without any further ado, we're going straight into our international standard. Hi, my sister. Please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Lorraine Tarambwa. I'm from Zimbabwe, but I stay here in South Africa. Welcome, uh, Lorraine. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a hairdresser mm-hmm. and a makeup artist, an upcoming makeup artist. And I also make body lotions for myself, for kids with eczema. So that's what I'm into now. Yeah. So how was the transitioning from, well, have you ever stayed in Zim? Yes, I grew up in Zimbabwe. You grew up in Zim. When did you come to South Africa? I came to South Africa in 2008. Mm. Yes. And how was that transitioning? Uh, The the transitioning for me was very bad because Mm. when I came here, I didn't know anyone. Mm. So I stayed in Pretoria in Marabastad for a few days. Then from there, I went back to Cape Town. Mm. So when you came here, you were coming from Cape Town? Uh, no, I first arrived in uh, Pretoria first, then mm-hmm. from there I went to Cape Town. And then how was life then when you got to Cape Town? Uh, for me, that time it was really bad. At mm-hmm. some point I wanted to go back home because I didn't know anybody. Mm. What did you want to do when you got here? Actually, I just wanted to be away from home mm. because as a firstborn, things, my parents used to fight a lot. Mm. So I just felt like I think I've grown enough to just leave the house and just leave them to let them fight by themselves. Mm. Yes. And then when you leave home, are you done with matric by then? Are you finished school? Yes. I had finished matric that time when I left home. Mm. I was 18 when I left home. So the only person that I told I was leaving, it was my father. Mm. But he did support me, though he knew that I'm going to a country where I don't know anybody. But mm. for me, it was better than being at home because it was very toxic. Sure. Yes. But it must have been really, really bad. Ne? It was really, really bad. Sure. Okay, and then when you get into this um, land that you are foreign in and you don't know anybody, where do you start? When I came here, I came with my friend. Mm. She's actually a next-door neighbor. The mother used to sell Masonja and Marabastat. Mm-hmm. So when we came here, we came together. But getting here, the mother just got a job for her, and I had to be going with her to Marabastat to sell Masonja every day, mm. which was really bad for me because... She couldn't offer anything for me, Mm. of which we were expecting that she would help us since we were both her daughter. Mm. Yes. But she obviously took uh, the biological one. Yes, she took the biological one. I think within three days, she had already got a job for the daughter. And Mm. now for me, she was saying she's trying, but she couldn't Ah. find anything. But she just wanted help from me as well. Mm. Yes. And then after that, when you go to Cape Town... Actually, uh, there's this guy I was dating back when I was in high school. Mm. He also stays in the same area that we're staying. So when I got to Pretoria, I actually called him. I'm like, I'm in Pretoria, but I'm stuck. Mm. I don't have anywhere to stay. 
even before I came to Pretoria, he wanted me to come to Cape Town, but I was like, you mm. know, just going to stay with someone and at home they don't know. I didn't want that, but mm. I was left with no option. So he sent me money for the bus back then. I went to Cape Town, but getting to Cape Town, it was in the morning when I arrived to the bus. He was mm. also going to work. Mm -hmm. But I was expecting for him to be happy that my girlfriend is here, but he wasn't that happy. He just told me that my brother will come and pick you. Mm -hmm. So back then, I didn't know how Cape Town was. So the brother came with the train to pick me. So immediately when I was in the train, I was wondering where we were going and mm. I was expecting him. Maybe when he come back from work, I would see him, but I never saw him. Mm. So I stayed in Philippi. Immediately when I got there, the sisters knew that I knew how to do hair. Mm. So I just dropped my bag and bath and I followed them to the salon. Mm. So for him, I think I only saw him two weeks after. Huh. Yes. And so you guys were still dating? You know, it's this thing that you'd be like, no, we are from the same area. Mm. There's no way you would uh, throw me away. There's mm -hmm. no way you would not love me. And I'm staying with their sisters. Because then the system of how people work in South Africa, it was very different from where I'm coming from. So I couldn't understand anything. I'm mm -hmm. like, maybe he works somewhere and he only comes back weekend because he used to just give excuses. Mm. Yes. But And also you found that uh, even with the Zimbabwean community in South Africa, how they operate is not how people operate back home. Yes, it's very different. Sure. And then how do you survive all of that? Ah, sometimes, you know, you just know why you are here mm. and you wouldn't mind any other thing. You'd be like, so far as I'm surviving, it's mm. far much better than when I'm at home. Mm. Yes. So after um, working in Cape Town, when did you come this side? Actually, uh, I came back 2012 okay. from Cape Town. That same friend of mine told me that, Ish, you know, you're struggling in Cape Town and things are not really okay. Why don't you come back here to Pretoria? Because now things are much better with me. You can stay with me, then look for a job. Because then she told me she was working in Ocean Basket. She mm -hmm. was like, I know you're a head worker, so you can come here and try something else. Mm -hmm. So with the little money that I had saved up, I came to Pretoria. Mm. But I think uh, it was after a week I stayed with her, and she knew very well that month I didn't have money for rent because mm -hmm. I had used it to transport myself. She was like, you need to pay rent. I'm like, but you're the first person to know that I don't have money yes. right now. So she was like, no, I will take some of your clothes because then I, I, I stopped working with the sisters in the saloon and I got a job where they were selling clothes. Mm -hmm. Like this Senegalese people who sells clothes. Yeah. So from there, she took all the clothes that I was having, the nice ones. She was like, no, for the days that you have stayed here, this is what I'm taking. Mm -hmm. So I remember that very day in the morning, she was like, I'm leaving to work. You must go and bath. I want to lock my door. Yeah. So the remaining clothes for me, she put them in those uh, Ghana must go. I think you know Ghana must go. Mm -hmm. And I just stood in the park. I didn't know anywhere in Pretoria. Huh. So I remember there's a day during that week, there's a time I went to look for a job. There's a place called Dross in Hatfield. I walked to Hatfield, mm -hmm. but I was with this Zimbabwean girl. So I took her numbers. I was using those small phones. So mm -hmm. as I took her numbers, when I was in the park, I just called her. I'm like, you know what? I don't know if you can help me, mm -hmm. but I'm stuck here. Mm -hmm. She was like, Ish, you know what? I'm also staying with my sisters, but let me call them there at work mm. to see if we can accommodate you. Mm. So that is how they accommodated me for like, I think it was six months. Mm. I'm trying to look for a job. Mm. I would go for interviews. It wouldn't work. But for them also, you know, in life, some people, they would want to help you and still take advantage. Mm -hmm. I was the one now taking off, taking care of all their kids mm -hmm. because they were working in restaurants. I would wash, cook, iron mm. and do everything. But it didn't really pain me because it's something that I know how to do mm. while as I was looking for a job as well. Mm. So there's this one time, one of my uncle was coming to buy a car here in South Africa. So I told my parents, I'm like, I think I need to come back home. Mm. Things are not moving well. That's how I went back home. Mm. But getting home as someone that doesn't have anything, mm. three days was very, it yeah. was too much for me. Mm. I now came back again to South so Africa. So three days took you back to that state that uh, it was in when you left home. <laughs> yes. So. Because my parents, though, those parents that used to fight right from the time that we were very young and mm. up until we finished high school. So my mother, she does her things in a certain way. My father is those calm people. So for me, just seeing all those things, it reminded me of how things were, were when I was back home. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't survive. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I need to go back home. Mm. That's how I came back to South Africa. But I arrived again in that same place where the lady that took me in was staying. Mm -hmm. So after three days, I came back from Zimbabwe. I think after a month, I got a job. Mm. 
that is where I met uh, my ex-husband. Mm. It was in a Nigerian shop. It was a wholesale shop where they used to sell hair pieces. Yeah. So that's where we were working there together. He was the manager. I was also working as a salesperson there. Mm -hmm. Yes. For how long have you guys been working together? Uh, we worked together, I think, for almost two years. Mm. We were just friends. We would talk until we now say he liked me. So immediately in the company, the company rule was if you are dating in the company, definitely one person has to leave. Mm. So we kept it hidden for some time. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can't keep things hidden yeah, for a very forever. long time. Mm. So we had a meeting with everyone and the owner as well. They were like, between both of you, you need to choose who's going to leave. But we already had plans to say, okay, I can't keep working here for a very long time. Mm. I chose to leave the the job and you remain there. Mm. So immediately when I left the job, I opened my own shop. Mm -hmm. That is when I started staying with him. Mm. So after staying with him, the shop wasn't really moving very well. I thought I would cope and it was very far with the little savings that I was having. It wasn't doing so well. Yeah. So it was in uh, Mamelodi in the Mafias. That's where I opened the shop. Then I closed down that side. I opened another one again in town, mm -hmm. in Navy House. Back then when they just started uh, building Navy House. Mm -hmm. But with him now seeing that uh, I'm not coping with work, he would put the blame on me that you're not doing it very well. You know how men can be. Yeah. They would think maybe I'm keeping extra savings somewhere. Meanwhile, it was not the case. Mm -hmm. So from there, Navy House was doing a bit better. After that, now, as he, I was uh, having that shop, he stopped working as well. Mm. So when he stopped working, things really got very bad. Sure. We thought we would pull up, but we couldn't. Mm. So we had our own. Uh, he was staying where he was staying before we stayed together. So it got to a time whereby we couldn't manage to pay rent. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know what? We can't go and stay in a half room. Mm -hmm. Let's just manage this room because then I was already pregnant. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, you you like expensive things. I'm trying to co cut my cost according to my own uh, way I'm getting them. And I'm like, it's the same thing. You stay in the half room, you calculate the money for electricity and for the water. And in my condition now, I wouldn't cope staying in a place where there's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So I remember back then he packed his bags. It was like a joke. He mm. said, I'm leaving. Mm. I was two months pregnant that time. Mm. So the, he had one of his friends that was staying not far away from us. I went to tell him that uh, this is what happened. And he left the house because he said, I like to spend money in a certain way. Mm -hmm. We went to beg him. He came back. He mm -hmm. had already paid rent where he got a place there and he came back home. So from there, I was two months pregnant. We moved from there. I agreed to go and stay in the half room. Things really got very bad. Mm -hmm. I closed down the shop in every house. I started doing, uh, there's a lady that I was working for. She was a South African. I would go and clean her apartment. Mm. Then if she had any food stuff in her house and whatever, because then I was trying to hide my pregnancy mm -hmm. so that she would not fire me because if she see that I'm pregnant, she would think mm -hmm. maybe I'm not cleaning very well. Yeah. But then at some point she noticed that I can't cope. Mm. It was during Christmas. She just bought Christmas present for me. She was like, you know what, Lorraine, I think next year my daughter will be able to be cleaning the house. It was not very big. Mm -hmm. So just rest. I know you're pregnant, but after you deliver, you're still welcome to come back. Mm -hmm. But throughout that time, since he was not working, the shop was not doing very well. The money that I was getting there is mm -hmm. what I was using to pay rent. Mm -hmm. And him, he was doing this DSTV thing. There's a time they were installing, installing all those yeah. free channels, church channels for DSTV. He was mm -hmm. doing that, but he wasn't bringing much on the table. But mm -hmm. I was like, as a person that I really love, sometimes you have to start somewhere. Yeah. So I gave birth. He got a job in Nigerian embassy. Mm -hmm. I think like a week before I gave birth. So from there, things started going very well. He was driving these uh, consulars in Nigerian embassy. He was a personal driver. Mm -hmm. So things started getting very better then. But now he started changing. Okay. I gave birth. That very week, I saw a message in his phone. He's trying to tell this girl that I cannot buy what you want to buy because my wife just gave birth. Mm -hmm. I don't have money. Mm -hmm. It pained me, but in the other hand, I was like, he's it trying is, to tell this yeah. girl that I don't have money. My wife just gave birth. Mm -hmm. But it didn't stop from there. As a person who was now driving, everything now changed. Mm -hmm. I would call him or I would ask for money. He always believed that, no, as a woman, I'm spending a lot of money. Sure. So from there, there are times that you just pick those, uh, you know, those um, shop right advert papers where they advertise grocery. Yeah. You bring them home. 
write everything down for you. If it's 23 rand 50 cents, if it's, if let's say tissues are 23 rand 50 cents, you would say tissues are 23 rand 50 cents, oh. sugar is 24 rand. Everything will be written on the paper. Mm. So for me, I was like, so far as I'm getting everything, I never saw it as abuse. Mm -hmm. But the minute I go to the shop with a card and try and buy something that is over, maybe with the 20 rand, mm. before I finish packing those things in the plastic bag, either it's in checkers, he would call me. What kind of a wife are you? Sure. You don't know how to spend money. You know, as a woman, you know how sometimes you just pick something you wouldn't know that it's over maybe you with the 20 rand. You it. Yes. I only remember sometimes when he calls me, I'm still packing the things. But mm. I used to take that lightly. I'm like, oh, maybe you'll stop one day. Mm. So I got a job then in, a, there's a saloon in Hatfield. It's the student area. So I was mm. working there. I never used to monitor most of the things. He told me that, no, you can use your own money. The other things in the house, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to have a nanny in the house because I look back from where I come from. I'm the first born. We are five girls. Mm. I'm like, you know what? Let me take my sister from home, mm -hmm. my younger sister, the one that followed me, so that she stays with me and I send her to school mm -hmm. so that my son, when he's coming from pre preschool, she would pick my son mm -hmm. and come home. So we stayed with her for five years. She was doing electrical engineering. Everything was fine. Mm. So in 2017... Uh, that time they were doing visas for people to go and see TB Joshua. I would hear stories of people who have done their visas coming to him and testify. I'm like, you know what? I think I need to go there. Mm -hmm. I need to go there. And that time we were building in Nigeria. So he did a visa for me. I went to Nigeria, mm -hmm. 2017. I left him with my younger sister. But when I came, when I went there, before I went there, mm -hmm. I called his uh, parents and he also called them. I'm like, Mama, I'm coming. But, you know, there's this thing that she was happy on my own side, but she had a private call with with, yeah, with him. Her, yeah. And then I would understand Yoruba very well. She told him that, no, you know what? Now is not the right time for her to come. Finish building the house first, then you, you, she will come. Or you guys, all of you come. And mm -hmm. remember, he can't travel that side because he doesn't have a permit. Okay. But us as Zimbabweans, we, I, I had the permit so I could travel that side and come back. Mm -hmm. So I remember I went to Lagos. Since she said, no, I can't come. And I had already bought those nice dresses to ah. try and go and impress them. Mm. But they didn't allow me to see them. So I remember I was in Lagos. I stayed in a hotel. The brother stays there in Lagos. I never saw anyone. Even. So why, why did you even go there then if you couldn't even make it to the to For the me, home? I just put it in a way that, okay, they don't want to see me. Let me just go to church. But mm. as I was there... It was paining me. Have you ever passed someone in the street? You'd be mm. like, oh, Mara, they look alike. Maybe it's the maybe brother. It's my in-law. You know? Mm. Or maybe let me just call them. But you remember what they told you that since they said you must not come now, don't bother calling anyone. Mm -hmm. I think if I had just had that nerve to say, let me just call them and let them know that I'm around, probably I could have known better. Mm -hmm. But I didn't call anyone. I went to Nigeria and I came back. Now, coming back here, remember I had left my sister, my younger sister. Mm -hmm. I'm by the airport. I'm looking at him. He's not okay. I'm like, baby, what's going on? You even lost weight. What's mm. going on? He was like, no, we'll talk mm. when we get home. Getting home, he just said, your sister has something to tell you. Mm. I'm like, what? He said, your sister is pregnant. I'm like, but why are you the one telling me that she is pregnant? Yes. Why is she not the one telling me? Yes. And she's very close to me, you know. We're mm. very close in a certain way whereby I never thought she would hide something from me. Yes. There are guys that would come because they would see the way the family is and the way I'm taking care of her. They would approach me first before they approach her. Mm -hmm. So I was so confused. The first thing that I asked him, is it your pregnancy? Why are you the one telling mm -hmm. me that she's pregnant? So from there, since I took her from home, from my parents, I'm like, okay, she must come and explain yourself mm -hmm. who this pregnancy is for because... Nami, you don't have any right to come and tell me that my sister is pregnant. She must come and tell mm -hmm. me that, you know what, Mama, really, I'm the one, I'm pregnant, and mm -hmm. this is for this person. So she was like, oh, it's for this Congolese guy. Mm -hmm. I told you, I'm like, you know what, you only left with just the last semester. You could have just hold yourself mm -hmm. and finish off and say thank you in a nice way than for you to be pregnant and you can't finish your last semester in school. Mm -hmm. For five years you've been studying, but this is all what you can bring on the table. Mm -hmm. So I, get, I called my parents, they were like, she, can, she must come home so that she explains herself. Mm. Because for me, I felt like if I'm to let her go, just like that to the boyfriend's place, my parents would say, I, from yes. my hands, that is what she now did. So she mm -hmm. went back home. But to my own surprise, I would call my mother and explain to her how painful it was, how hurting it was to me. She never responded in a nice way. Mm. I can't say in a nice way, but she was very calm about it. Yeah. So when she came back to South Africa, 
she just told me that she's coming back to South Africa. I was thinking that she's still coming to my house. Then mm-hmm. as a sister, we see what we can do. Mm-hmm. And she still continues with school. She didn't come back straight to my house. For like two days, I was very worried. I'm like, mm-hmm. but the bus left yesterday. She's not yet here. Mm-hmm. What could be wrong? I even went to Bosman to check. <clears throat> this certain bus, did it arrive? They said it arrived yesterday around 12. Mm-hmm. So that is when I now started uh, calling her, calling her, calling her. But the boyfriend is the one that answered the call. Mm-hmm. She was like, no, she's not here. Another two days again, I tried calling. That is when she now said, no, I'm around. I'm like, I just wanted to know if you're okay. Mm-hmm. But the tension that now uh, my husband was now having, the anger that he was now having because my sister is pregnant, I couldn't understand it. But my instincts told me that, no, man, there's something that is more to this thing mm-hmm. that I'm not aware of because I was a person who was never home. Yeah, I would come back home maybe around 8, 9 o'clock when people are about to sleep because I remember I used to work in the salon. Yeah. So uh, we never spoke with my sister. Mm. She only came home to collect all her things. I tried talking to her. She was like, don't force me on something that I don't want to do. Huh. I'm like, this is the least thing that I was expecting from you. Mm. So immediately she went to stay with a boyfriend. My husband, each time you would mention my sister's name, you would be very angry in a certain way that I couldn't understand. Mm. So the only time that I spoke to her, it was when the boyfriend now called me. She was like, Lorraine, please come and help us. She's in hospital. She wants to have a C-section. I'm like, okay. She was due to give birth now. She was due to give birth. So I remember from the whole nine months, from the time I knew that she was pregnant, I never spoke to her. Mm-hmm. She was distancing herself from me. I didn't know where she was staying. Mm-hmm. But as a sister, I'm like, you know what? She's my sister. Let me just go. I went there. She gave birth. So I'm like, the day she wanted to be discharged from hospital, I'm like, let me take you to your house. Mm-hmm. That is when I'll know where you're staying. At least I'll help you. Since you had a C-section, yeah. I'll help you to birth the baby. She was like, no. We can go to your house with the baby. You bath the baby from there. Then I would use a taxi from my own side to go to my house. I'm like, this is yeah. a newborn baby. You cannot. So she wanted to leave the baby with you. No, she wanted to bath me to bath the baby in my house, mm-hmm. and I must not know her house. Remember now, from the hospital, I was just supposed to go straight to her own house. Mm-hmm. So she was like, no. I'm like, it's a newborn baby. Mm-hmm. There's no way you'd say we'll take a taxi from here. Then that time there was no uh, Huba like the way mm-hmm. it is now. They were Texas. Mm. She was like, no, we can go to your house. You bath the baby. Then after bathing the baby, we take another taxi to go there. I'm like, it's a newborn baby. You don't do that. Mm. No matter how, if you're sleeping on the floor, there's no way I would laugh at you. Let's go together. So that is how we went to her house. I did everything and I went back home. So throughout until she healed, I was going to bath her, to bath the baby as well. But now each time I would mention to my husband again that I'm going there, he was always angry in a certain way mm. that, you know, your sister chose that. I don't know why your sister did that. But I just thought as he's just getting angry because he was expecting something that is more mm-hmm. from her. I didn't like take it out. It was from a brother's. View, yes. yes. And they were very close. Mm-hmm. So now she now thinks we're not okay. The husband was not working. Remember the guy that she started staying with, they were in the same uh, class together. Mm-hmm. So I would take food from the house when my husband is not there. I would hide it, drive, go and give it to her because she never asks. She's that kind of a person whereby no matter how she can be suffering, Mm. she can never say it out. Mm -hmm. So there's this particular day, it was in the afternoon, she came over to just see me. I had packed like things because we used to buy a lot of grocery and keep in the pantry. Mm -hmm. So my husband let me to uh, leave those things go with her. He never said anything. Mm -hmm. And I escorted my sister to a place. When I came back, he said... Uh, I want you to go and buy everything that you gave to your sister. Trust me, I didn't know because the way I'd wrap it, I didn't know that he could know that this is rice, this is sugar, this is cooking oil, but he touched everything when I was not (laughs) away. He said, go and buy all those things because your sister chose to live your own life. She thought Mm -hmm. she's old enough Mm -hmm. to do things by herself. Meanwhile, my sister never asked me, but I felt like she cannot just be losing weight and I have all those things. I might as well give it to her. So I went to buy those things. I remember very well. He said, you can't sleep in this house if you don't buy those things. Mm -hmm. I went to buy it. But throughout that time, I would uh, my instincts would tell me, no, man, there's more to this thing, the way he's getting very angry. And I would ask her, is there anything that you want to tell me that as your sister, you feel free to tell me anything? But she said, no. Mm. So from that time now, my husband would never sleep in the house. Remember, now he's driving the diplomats. Sometimes they will recommend him to other people who are coming from different countries. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, he's never home. Mm. So from that time now, 
uh, the consular officer left because remember those people, they are only here for a short period of time. Yes. So he bought a taxi fire car. Mm -hmm. So he was doing taxi fire, but he was never home. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'll be like, no, he's trying to make ends meet. But all those things that you do, even when you want to buy something, you tell him, no, today I want to use Raja. He will tell you, no, why do you want to use Raja? Mm -hmm. Raja is not necessary for what you want to cook. No. He was those kind of people. Mm -hmm. So from that time, he started doing huba. He will never sleep home. I remember there's a certain time. I looked for him for two days mm -hmm. only to ask his friend that, you know, these people, they are killing people now. I don't know if he's still alive. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the police station to check if he's okay. That is when the friend now said, no, I know the hotel that he's in. Huh. So we went there. He was having all these diplomats and he was those kind of people now that if the diplomats are coming, if they say they want uh, girls that are here in South Africa, mm -hmm. he knows where each where and everyone is. But girls. I wasn't aware of that. Mm -hmm. So I remember getting to that uh, guest house I only saw him. I never said anything, but I'm like, thank God you're alive. Mm -hmm. But to him, it made a big, uh, he made it a big issue that why would you follow me around? Why would you want to embarrass me? I'm like, you know what? I just wanted to make sure that you're alive because if anything happens to you, your parents are the first one to call me. Mm. So from that time, I would notice sometimes if he comes home, I'll take the car, drive it around. Maybe I want to buy one or th two things. Girls would come to the car and say, no, he's not the one. He's mm. not the one, you know? So I never used to think, or fit in another way. I'm mm. like, ah, since he's a taxi fire guy and he's doing other side hustles, probably they think he's the one driving the yes. car. So he changed the car that he was having. He bought another Hyundai. So from that time, he bought another Hyundai. Things were, you know, as you're driving, you know, aircon is blowing you. Your skin color changes as well, mm -hmm. you know. So from that time, I remember it even got worse. I remember there's a night that uh, he went to mainland. My spirit would tell me if something just happens. Mm -hmm. There's this particular girl that he did a visa for. Because now that he was doing taxi fire, he was also doing part-time visas for people since he has contact in Nigerian embassy. He went to mainland. When he entered back in the house, I'm like, ah, welcome. You're coming from mainland. He was like, how did you know? You little witch. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why would you call me a little witch? I'm like, so you went to sleep with another person and you still want to come and sleep with me? He said, mm -hmm. so who told you that I didn't bath? Huh. So for me, it really offended me that each time that he wants to sleep with me, I would imagine things like mm -hmm. how was he doing it with that other woman? So from that time, I never used to want to sleep with him. Mm -hmm. It would be something that he would really force me. Or sometimes when I feel like he's irritating me when I want to sleep, that is when I'll be like, let me just give it to him mm -hmm. so that I'll be able to sleep. So from that time... Now, lockdown hit. Mm. He used to just have all those friends that would do Yahoo. Mm -hmm. So from there, you'll be like, there's this lady that is doing internet dating. She's making money. I didn't know anything about mm. that, even uh, to operate the computer very well. Mm. He was like, no, I'll put Wi-Fi for you in the house. So definitely you can use the Wi-Fi. I'll teach you. I'll buy a laptop. But I used to just tell myself that, no, I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. So during the time of lockdown, we had Wi-Fi in the house. He was like, you know what? This is the right time now to do the internet dating. Mm -hmm. So as he told me, I asked Epps around because where I was gymming, there's this girl that I was friends with. I'm like, do you know any dating sites? He just told me a name. I went home after my gym session. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. I now told him, I'm like, she told me that there's this dating app mm -hmm. so we can try. He quickly paid for the app. He did his own too. I did my own. So I remember that time I only, I used to log in every day, but there's this particular day I logged into the app. There was this guy, he was a Nigerian, he was a doctor in the UK, mm -hmm. but that guy was too gentle mm -hmm. with everything that I was experiencing in the house. I might not be able to go into detail, but back then yeah. the trauma was just too much. I could feel the distance that we are growing apart. Mm -hmm. We no longer love each other. I'm just in the house because of the child. Mm -hmm. So... That guy, I would talk to him most of the time. And he was now more like a friend. I mm -hmm. couldn't now tell him that, you know what, this is just dating on the app I'm married. Mm -hmm. Because the agreement was he is the brother that is staying, me, staying with me in the house. And my mm -hmm. son is also there. I'm a divorcee. Mm -hmm. So each time the guy would call on a video call, remember a man can cough in the house. Mm -hmm. He'd be like, ah, oh, it's my brother. He's back. Or sometimes mm -hmm. he calls and he's not there. I never used to hide anything. Yeah. He too, maybe, let's say he's there. He's opening his apps. All these women call. You'll be like, ah, oh, see my sister. Sometimes you even turn the camera to say, see my sister and her son. We mm -hmm. live together. So it was never a problem. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm bad thing. He would be like, no, let me check your messages. Someone responded, what must I say? We would mm -hmm. be telling each other what to respond, you know. It was fine. And each time they send money, you will be the first person to know that a ah, so-so-so person send money or so-so-so person send me a phone, please. It's arriving on a so-so date. So I never thought to me one day he would start recording me because he felt the way I was now talking to this guy, 
I lost focus on the aim on why I started going on that app. Okay, wait. So the aim was to make money out of the people that yes. you'll be dating on the site. Yes. So because now you had even made friends on the site. I think for me, immediately when I logged in on the app, I only met three guys. Mm -hmm. One guy was from France. The other one was, uh, two people were in France. And this particular one was in UK. Mm -hmm. So I was even telling him that, you know what? I met this guy. He's a doctor and he's a Nigerian. The guy is so calm. He's so handsome. You know, we used to just joke in a way like that at home. So I didn't feel like uh, at that particular time he took offense. And he began to be very jealous mm -hmm. because I said that person was very handsome and he was very friendly. The guy would come in the morning when he comes back from work, if he's working night shift, and we would talk. Mm -hmm. So he now said, I'm losing focus. Mm -hmm. He started recording me. Recording you how? Like Each time I'm making a phone call, even if he's sitting next to me, like the way recording. me and he is recording okay. me. So he would record me. And remember, with this particular guy, even if he's sitting there, I might tell the guy that I love you. Remember, I stay with my brother and mm -hmm. my son as well. So I never saw it as if I'm doing something that is wrong to him to say I'm cheating on him because it was an agreement between both of us. Neither him to when he's doing his own thing on his phone, mm -hmm. he can never tell a woman that I love you because I felt like we are just in the house. It's not like he's seeing these people, he's sleeping with them, you know. So from there, he started recording me. I didn't know. At some point... The guy sent money via Western Union. On the first time, he sent via my friend mm -hmm. in her FNB account. So I don't know whether she he he took offense that this guy sent a lot of money. It was fifteen thousand during the time of lockdown, and mm -hmm. we didn't have anything in the house. Mm -hmm. I told him the whole fifteen thousand. Let's use it to buy something in the house. We did. The second time, the guy bought phones. He was like, "No, let me just buy phones for you because the camera quality on your phone is not really good." Mm -hmm. He sent phones. So the way I was now talking to that guy, you know, he was now more like a friend. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even most of the time ask for anything. He will be the one to willingly say, no, let me offer you this. Let me offer mm -hmm. you that. So from that time, he started recording me, he started recording me. Each time he was sitting next to me, I didn't know. One day, he now said, you know what, it's high time you need to stop whatever you're doing because you're losing focus. Mm -hmm. And there was the guy wanted to send, I think, 50000 or so, if I remember by that time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? Let this guy just send the 50000 Then I would stop because I've worked so hard. Mm -hmm. All these months just talking to the guy. Then I just ghost him like that. Mm -hmm. So from that time, he was like, no, it's not possible. I just told the guy that, you know what, my ex is back. Because I didn't want to ghost him. He was a very nice person. And the pressure now that I was getting from the house, I didn't know how to tell him that, okay, mm -hmm. of course you're saying I'm not doing well. Meanwhile, you are doing the same thing. So he just woke up one day. We're fighting. He was like, you need to stop whatever that you're doing. I'm like, I told you, it's not like I'm sleeping with those people or anything. It was an agreement. You taught me how to do this. Let me just receive this money because mm -hmm. it's going to do a, something in the yeah. house. Then would stop. So from there, he was like, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. The first time he started to act somehow in the house, we'd just be sitting there. He told me that, you know what, I think go and find your own place. And me too, I find my own place. I feel like you want to explore things out there. I'll be paying rent for you. I'll be doing everything for you. Go and explore. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, you know what? From where I come from, the minute you're telling me to go and explore, definitely I'm going to sleep with other men. I'm going to explore things that I cannot do. Mm -hmm. And I'll still come back to you. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Let's rather start all over. Mm -hmm. Start knowing now what do I like, what makes me happy and whatever. We start as if we are dating from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I think he didn't get the message right. He was like, no, you are forcing me to do what I don't want. Mm -hmm. So I remember we stayed for that month and in February on the 16th of February, that was 2020, mm -hmm. he said he's leaving the house. Okay. He's leaving the house. I'm like, he was those people that would pack their bags. I'm leaving or I don't want to. I'm just here because of the child. I remember begging him. Yeah. He stayed for that time. So the other day, but things were just awkward in the house. But the had you ended things with the, the guy? No, I was now talking to him without him knowing okay. because I just wanted that money because mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I can't just stop just like that. Mm -hmm. So I remember there's this one day he came back home. He started packing the bags in the bedroom. I was sitting in the dining room watching a movie. So my son went to the bedroom. Daddy, what are you doing? He was like, from here, we are going to Johannesburg. Then from Johannesburg, we'll go to Nigeria. He's yeah, already no. packing the bags. I'm like... So immediately when we, I heard that... When he says we, he means... Him we. and the son. Ah. Mm. So for me, I'm like, you know what? These people, they are capable of doing that. My mm. son came to whisper to me that they said from here we're going to Jobek and from Jobek we're going to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. 
I just came out as if I want to take something outside. I started running. And mm. remember, lockdown was almost finishing, but mm. not really. So you saw us on the camera that we are running. We enter underground the basement and we're going. He drove the car and he entered one way. He was chasing us with a car. The only place that we could enter, it was one Pakistan shop that was open. It was around 10 at night. Mm. So immediately we entered there. My son is the one that explained that he wants to steal me away. I don't know why. Mm. So those Pakistan guy, when he drove and parked his car, they were like, you know what? You can't do this to your woman and we'll shoot you if you're not careful here. Mm. So I wanted to go and report him. I called my friend. That same one that helped me with the account. Mm -hmm. I'm like, please help me. I want to go and report him to the police station. I went there to the police station. I just said I couldn't alter any statement because mm -hmm. I'm like, if I report him as a person that I really love, probably I didn't hear very well. Mm. And I came back home. So he also called my sisters. He was like, I don't know why Lorraine was just running. He was, she was just running in the street. I don't yeah. know why. He couldn't say he wanted to take Roland. I'm mm. like, he wanted to take my son away. He denied it. Mm. So people, he, he's those kind of people whereby <laughs> if they say something, you would believe him. You'd be like, no, uh -uh, probably you are the one that you is made wrong. a mistake. You I made a mistake. Mm. So that night he was like, if not because of my child, you know, I wouldn't be staying here. You know, I would go away. He stayed at home that time. But things were very awkward. Mm. So from that time, not knowing that he had already took all my documents from yeah. my school documents, because throughout the time that I was staying with him, I was doing courses. I would just keep my certificates like mm -hmm. that. So he was taking documents one by one, one by one. My child birth certificate, he tore it the day he was leaving. So I was doing the business of borrowing people money, the people mm. who were on the building, the securities and everything. There was money in the drawer. So the day he decided to say he's going, he had already taken other things before without me realizing because all the documents used to stay in, in different files to say this is for Lorraine, this is mm -hmm. for Fatai, this is for Roland. Mm -hmm. So all my school documents, they were no longer there. Yeah. Roland's documents, they were no longer there. Yeah. So the day he said he's leaving, I didn't beg him like the way I used to do mm. before. I'm like, this guy is always used to the system of him picking his bags and saying, yeah. I'm leaving. This is not the first time he did that most of the time. So he left. But now, three days, four days, one week pass, I'm calling him. Now I'm the one apologizing to say I'm really sorry for what I did and whatever, mm. whatever. He was like, I'm not coming back. Because he knew the damage that he had already done. Yes, and not knowing that this guy had already rented another house, because the first few days he left the house, he, he said he was staying in a hotel. Mm. So I remember there's this particular girl that uh, she came to my house because I was doing uh, her like house calls. Someone would call me mm. to do her. This particular girl came. I asked her, where did you get my number? Mm. It was like I got a number from this taxi fire guy and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I still had those things to say, no, this guy still cares about me. Mm. He's still sending clients. So as that girl came... You know, when you're doing someone's hair, you end up opening up yeah. and I was still hurt and whatever. The lady was like, but that guy is too calm to do something like that. <laughs> we you know, know? so not knowing that that girl is the girlfriend. I didn't know all that. She came with a small, uh, I think it was a boy or whatever, a child. So I opened up like, you know, I was hurt and I was leaving the whole so house you are, alone. You are, you are opening up to your husband's side chick without yes, knowing. Yes, I didn't know. Hi, I didn't know. So so now it was the point whereby I would hear someone saying, if you go to this church, your husband is gone. He was going to come back. If you go to this prophet, your husband is going to come back. I remember I went to a place called, um, it was Soshanguve. Mm -hmm. This particular lady prays for people in a mountain and whatever. That day they had... Uh, Washed me with ashes and whatever. I was white everywhere, but I was wearing a long dress. So in, my sister. So as I was inside a taxi, <laughs> I saw his car parked at a certain place close to my house. I'm like to the taxi driver, please stop me here. I stopped. Now he's waiting there. There was no one in the car. I saw that lady. I did the hair coming to the car. I was so shocked, you know. Hey, but now. I told him to open the car door. I entered. I was so embarrassed that day. He said, get down of my car right now. So in my own mind, I'm like, since he's a taxi fire guy, maybe the he came to pick. Yeah, mm. yeah, since he remember, he's the one that directed the lady to come to me, not mm. knowing that he's the girlfriend. He embarrassed me that day. I came down of the car. I had to walk home. It was not a long distance, though. I went home. He was like, I'm coming home now. Mm. So he was now having this thing whereby when he's coming home, he wouldn't come alone. There's this lady that we used to call Auntie Auntie. So immediately he went to drop that lady at home around six at night. He came with the auntie in the house. Mm -hmm. Before you sit on the couch, you would dust it that day. Before they take my spirit away, uh, <laughs> let me dust the, 
the couch. But all these things for me now, my only aim was just to bring him back home. Yeah. I would hold the couch where he was sitting and start praying that God. Yay. I was just doing weird things in the house. Candles everywhere. Mm. Because I'd stayed with him for like 12 years. It was very difficult for someone to just go like mm. that, you know. So I remember he wiped the, the seat where he was sitting before. He was like, hey, before they take my spirit away, let me wipe this thing. <laughs> So he was now telling the auntie that, you know what, I've told Lorraine to move from this house. Mm. I cannot afford to pay rent for her. Mm. So she need to move. And I now asked him, where am I going to move and go to? He was like, you find somewhere else. Mm. If it's prayer that you're doing, that time I'd already, my color had already changed. I was now pale. Because of the prayer things, the Trust me, I was fasting. You. I was no longer eating. My appetite was gone. I couldn't cook for my child anymore. Everything was just a man, mess. I'm telling man. you, I was praying for him. I would wake up middle of the night and start praying. So I remember that day when he came, I was now looking very different. I was pale, you mm. know. He was like, my sister, if it's prayer and fasting you're doing, you better stop. I love because you. I'm not going to come back. Eh? I started crying. He was like, uh-uh. you are even I'm crying laughing, tears. <laughs> you're even crying tears. You have not cried unless the only time I'll come back is only when you cry blood. Trust me, you know. I would be begging him. I would be kneeling down. You know the way Nigerian women do. I would be holding his trousers to say, please come back. I'm really sorry, but trust me, it didn't work. Huh. Each time I would go into, or you know, there's these people that wear white garments that they'll be praying. They don't have a church. I would mm. go to church. Trust me, the minute I'm opening the door like this, it would be a phone call. I feel like I was putting fire on top of fire. I don't know how those people are created. Mm. So each time I'm, I'm back, Trust me, there'll be a phone call. Remember, he's no longer in the house. He'll mm. start insulting me. you do this. You think I'll come back. I'll never come back. Ah, But now I would call the parents and say, this is what your son did. Mm. The father might say, ah, Aisha, Mark, I'll call you back on network, network. Trust me, they're hearing me. And calling Nigeria by that time, it was very expensive. Mm. No WhatsApp. These old people, they don't have WhatsApp. The mother also would tell me, ah, Aisha, Mark, I'm on a motorbike. I'll call you back. But till today, these people don't want to take your calls. They don't want to take my calls. You mm. know, it was very bad. And we were that kind of a family whereby people would come home to eat. I would cook. I was always excited to try nice recipes, new recipes for Nigerians. You know, so people would come to the house. Ah, our wife, you know how to cook? Are you the one that cooked this? So mm. we were that kind of a family whereby we would host parties, those family parties, people would come to eat. So now, when everything happened, I would go on my phone with all the contacts and start calling, ah, Pastor, please come, uh, Fatai, let him come back home. Someone would say, Aisha, I will call you. Let me talk to him, you know. Like mm. 100% of those people, like 100% of them, no one ever come back to mm -hmm. me and say, you know what, our wife, this is what we have done. Mm -hmm. We have spoke to him. So from that time, I remember I stayed two months when he was not in the house. He now came before my son's birthday in April. I was sitting down. He has been telling me all these days that, you know what, you need to move from that house. But where was I going to go to? There was no place that I was going to go to. I'm only relying on clients that I'm doing house calls to do here. I'm not working. So I only saw them coming in with those people from the Baki. You know, those Baki guys, those mm -hmm. when you want to move, like there were a lot of guys. There. I think I remember there were like five. Mm -hmm. I was sitting down. Now I couldn't do anything in the house. I couldn't clean. I couldn't do anything. I'm just Lorraine J. Mm. But he told me to pack. I remember me and my son were putting things in the black bag, but I was telling my mind that there's no way he's going to leave me without having a roof over my head. Mm -hmm. Let's just pack all those things, my clothes. Trust me, he left my clothes in the black bags. He took everything in the house, but he did ask me that you can take everything. But I'm like, okay, we are living together, so why must well, I take eh. everything? And by that time, I couldn't really think. I felt like at some point I lost my memory. I couldn't think mm. anything that I would... You were fasting too much, my sister, now where you were fasting and I can't really say I was fasting. Mm. Fasting, yes, I did, but I would go to this prophet today. Tomorrow I'll go to another one. Tomorrow mm. I'll go to another one. There's this particular one that almost raped me mm. because he came to the house. He wanted to pray for me. He was like, ah, oh, my sister, there's no network. That's why the guy left the house. I'm like, what kind of network, you know? <laughs> so the minute he was touching, touching me, he was like, can you feel anything? And remember, I'm stressed. I can't feel anything. <laughs> he now said, ah, oh, no, please. I think he saw uh, condoms in the drawer. He now asked, do you have condoms here? That is when my mind now said, ah, oh, so why does he want condoms? Definitely this pastor wants to do something. I told him no. So he couldn't say, I saw them in the drawer. You understand? 
So he wants to bring back the network. He wanted to bring back the network, you know. Hey. So at that particular time, you know, when you want something, I could mm. have done anything to just bring mm. him back, but I couldn't do that. Uh, my mind told me that, no, this guy wants to do something. And the way he was even looking, I'm like, no matter how, how is he going to bring my network mm-hmm. back when he's looking like that? So that is when he left. And I even paid him, I think, two, 250 or so for transport. And he left. He was like, no, I'm going to come back. So, but my son would tell me that, mommy, you know what? There's no way you would bring broken love. There's no way you mend a broken mirror mm. and put the pieces back together because this guy is gone. And mm. before every other thing that happened, I had two dreams, the same dream that was telling me that he's going the same way that he left. Mm-hmm. But I just used to tell myself that, no, man, he's going to come back. The devil is a liar. Yes. Mm. So I remember they were removing curtains, they were removing everything. At that time, I was so stressed and so frustrated that I couldn't think. So when I saw that everything is going mad, People are even bringing things downstairs. I just took a small bin. I did as if I wanted to go and throw the bin away. Mm. I went down. I asked the security. I'm like, I'm not seeing his car on the camera. Where is his car? Mm. So I went downstairs. My aim was to deflate the tires of the car. Okay. So not knowing that he had changed the whole four tires and the valve were very tight. Mm-hmm. They were not loose. So when I went down... He was removing curtains in the house because we were staying on the first floor. Mm. I tried to deflate the tires. I'm opening them. They were not opening. I don't know, maybe because I wasn't eating as well, remember, mm-hmm. I didn't have energy. So he saw me from the window. He now came out. So as he came out, I'm busy. I want to open the valves of the tires. They sure couldn't open. I want to put a spell. I, I don't know what was in his mind then, mm. but he could see that I wanted to do something on the mm. car. So immediately he came. Where we were staying is those uh, gates where you have to pay first for the gate to open. Mm-hmm. So he reversed the car and the car hit me from the back and I fell on the wall. So from there, I don't know where I got the energy from. I used my bare hands to break the car into pieces. Ah. Like the front, uh, those, those, um, the front uh, glasses, the windows, everything that you can think of on the car, the radiators, I was pulling mm. them away because at some point he came down from the car. Mm. I actually wanted to light the car and so that it burns. But I'm like, if I light it here, definitely it's going to burn the whole building yeah. because the parking was under the buildings. Mm. So now, remember the power, I got it after he hit me on the wall. I don't know where I got the power. So I'm like, so this guy is really serious. He's leaving. So mm. he wants to just leave me like that. I don't know what got into me. Mm. I broke the car into pieces. Mm. The only thing that he could do then, he drove it though, but it was no longer having the mirrors. It was no longer having those the back glasses, the radiators, the water was even leaking, the tires, I couldn't open them. Mm -hmm. So that is when he drove the car, he left. They couldn't finish picking the things in the house. So the following day now, he came. I'd already, I slept in that house. Mm -hmm. So the following day, he was like, I think the parents spoke some sense into him that if you're not careful with this woman, she's going to kill you. Mm. So from that point, he came with his friends and the friend's car. They were like, we know with the state that you're in, excuse me, we can't leave you here. We have to go and let you stay with your younger sister. Mm. Trust me, you remember, we were just trying to mend the relationship that wasn't there with my mm. sister. So I remember then we drove to my sister's place. He even called my sister. He was like, see, this is your sister. You are the only relative that she has. <laughs> I'm a because I remember then I couldn't stand properly. Mm. I didn't have energy. I was like, see, if we leave here there, she's going to die. We gave her 1.5 for her to go and find a palace space to stay. But it's, she looks like she needs someone to take care of her because she might kill herself. Mm. So his aim was to take my son and go with, because he said, I'm not fit enough. And after I broke the car, there is no way I'll be able to stay with my son mm. because he actually called police for me huh. that day when I broke the car. I'm like, yes, it's Melissa's damage of the property, but this is my car as mm. well. So he only said, no, you don't have the papers for that car. I'm like, you know, I worked for this car as well. So mm. the police now said, no, probably she did that out of anger, out of emotions and whatever. But since she has a child, at this point, with the way things are happening, we can't arrest her. Mm-hmm. So I remember then I stayed with my sister in the house. The following day he came, because remember they had not finished taking the things in the flat. Mm -hmm. I remember him coming inside, thanking my sister that thank you for accommodating my family. I was sleeping on in the dining room on a small bed, though, you know those plastic beds Mm -hmm. for for kids. That's why I was stay sleeping with my son. Yeah. So now I looked at him. I'm like, so this guy just wasted my time like that. You Mm -hmm. remember now I didn't have energy, I couldn't walk. People are now thinking that I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. I just went and locked that door. Mm. I took a cord, an electric cord that was there. 
I'm like, I want to tell, I want you to tell me that all these years that you've been suffering, you've suffered with me. Mm. We've built a house, we've done a lot of things, and you didn't do anything. I took the electric cord, I started hitting him. Ah. Trust me, I was so angry mm. in a certain way that I felt like he robbed my whole mm. life out of me. You know, I beat him. He was the, luckily it was in the th it's in the third floor. Mm. The windows are having bagla bazaar, but I think he could have jumped through the window. My sister, you mean to tell me you were stronger than that man? Trust me. At that point, I don't know where I was getting the energy from. Mm. I beat him not because I'm proud that I beat mm -hmm. him, but the anger for me when I look at now I'm sleeping on a smaller bed. I was driving before I had my house, everything. Mm. Like I don't know where I was getting the anger and the energy from. I mm. beat him. I beat him that day. Mm. Until he was like, I'm calling police. I'm like, call police. So it was now my sister that was trying to stop me from hitting him with an electric cord. Mm. I let him go. Because I'm like, okay, now what's going to happen with the child since you didn't pay Lobola? Mm. You understand? He was like, no, let me call your father. He called my father. He only told my father that I'm, I no longer want your daughter anymore. She has been eating my food for free. Huh. My father now said, are you sure that my daughter is alive? He said, yes, she's alive. You can talk to her. My father now said, there's no need for me to talk to you. I'll talk, call her on your own phone. He now said, you're not the last born of the world. So far as you said, my daughter was eating your food for free. Let her be. What's going to happen to your son? Mm -hmm. He was like, I need my son. My father now said, but you have not paid damages at home and whatever. Do the rightful thing for you to take the child. He said, send me your account number. I'll transfer the money now. That mm -hmm. is when my father hang up. So that gave me so much anger for me to hit him that you cannot speak to my father in mm -hmm. that manner because mm -hmm. you don't have respect. You think you can, just, you can just buy the life of my child just like that, mm -hmm. you know? So from that time, I started staying with my younger sister. They would laugh at me, both of them. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes when my sister's husband come, where is your sister? I'm like, I don't know. They'll be like, probably he, she's with your husband. I don't know. Maybe the husband also knew or they've had fights regarding him mm -hmm. in the house or whatever. I don't know. So from that time, as I started staying with my younger sister, now I'm thinking of killing him. I would go <laughs> out. My sister. It was really bad. Mm. So I remember as I was going out, there's a park that we normally pass. There were those guys. You know, these days I don't know what they're drinking or this Bronklin or whatever. Mm -hmm. I approached these guys. I'm like, I want you to do a job for me. <laughs> the anger that was mafia. in me, the anger that was in me, I would see him, you know, he's those guys that now, even when he sees you, the way he would drive off with his car is mm. for you to feel it that you've seen him. Mm. What actually made me think of killing him, there's a day I was buying happies and uh, close to, there's a KFC close to where I buy happies. I'm like, you know what? This guy cannot just leave me like that. I went and knocked on the car window. Remember after I broke the car, he fixed it mm. with that thing that you think I cannot do it. I went and knocked on the window. As he wind down, he saw me. The car almost mashed my leg. Mm. He passed. I'm like, ah, so this guy is even living nice. He's dressing nice. That used to pain me a lot mm. that uh, you cannot be living like that now. How can huh? you enjoy you life? Just, how can you enjoy life my... and you mess my own life? Mm. So from there now I talk I spoke with those guys. I'm like, you know what? I want you to do a job for me. They said my sister 1.5. I remember buying alcohol for them. I'm like, tomorrow, <laughs> before I sleep. I'm sorry, it's, it's like <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to take you seriously. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah. So I remember I bought them alcohol. They were drinking black clay, but I think I bought like eight or so for all of them that were there. They were mm. like, please, before you sleep, you need to send us the picture of this guy and mm. you know where he stays. By that time, I knew where you were staying. Mm. So at night now, I, I want to sleep. I have not sent the picture. The guys are calling me even middle of the night. Mm. Ah, I don't know. There's this revelation that just say, so Lorraine, you want to be the first one to kill someone mm. in your own family because of what? That is what saved him. Mm. There he must thank his stars. And for me, even the way they were going to do it, no one was ever going to know mm. what was going to happen to him. Because I asked those guys that, how are you guys going to do this? They were like, no, isn't it he took everything that you were having? Mm. We'll go to his house, make him give you everything that he took. Then mm. from there, we'll take him and go and throw him somewhere and put stones either in a drainage or whatever. No, he, his life would just end there. No mm. one would know. So I think if they didn't tell me how they were going to do it, I was just going to say do it. But mm. the fact that they told me, I'm like, you know what? No matter how painful this is, mm. I wouldn't be the first person to kill someone. Life still continues. Mm. So the guy now started threatening me that, no, you know, you made us arrange things. Now you're not doing it. I just didn't but answer didn't their calls. give them money? I gave them uh, money for alcohol to buy alcohol, mm -hmm. but I didn't give them the 1.5. I mm -hmm. was going to give them when their job is done. Mm -hmm. So from that time, my spirit, each time I would see a blue car because then he was driving a Hudai Ascent. Yo, even if I was happy or if I was smiling, trust me, 
I would be so sad that day because I'm like, maybe he's the one that passed. Maybe I didn't see the plate number very well. Mm. So it took me time for me to heal. And the other thing is where I was staying with my younger sister, if she was that person whereby if she sees me crying, she would comfort me, but she would laugh. Mm. Is that not what you wanted? So why are you crying? Mm. I want you to ask me two months from now if you still want the same person again. But mm. I just used to cry in the bathroom to console myself. The only person that was there for me it was my child. Because mm. I remember then throughout the whole three months that I stayed with my sister, they would cook my sonja every single day. And it's something whereby you remember now the life my son was used to and where now we're going to stay is totally different. And he mm. said, no, mommy, you know what? I think if I'm to eat with Amasi is better. That is when he developed the love for Amasi. There, even sometimes for me to eat, it was difficult. They would cut, you know, the wheat bakes. Mm -hmm. They would cut one into half and put a lot of milk. They would <laughs> open my mouth to give me to drink. It was very difficult. So I lost a lot of weight. Mm. I never used to go out where people would see me, places that I used to drive and pass through. If people see me, I'll be like, I'm gymming. But at some point, it was now looking like I'm sick. <clears throat> yes, I was paid. Yes. So I remember this particular day, since my child was wearing my clothes. Remember when the father wanted to go and stay with him? Mm. Only my clothes that were in the black bag is the mm. one that was remaining. So I wanted to buy some clothes for him. Because from that 1.5, they gave me that I must go and look for the dining room. I never used it. Mm -hmm. So I went to this place where they sell secondhand clothes. Mm -hmm. Immediately I entered there. This guy is a Nigerian guy. He's an Ibu guy. Immediately I saw him, I just started crying. I couldn't select the clothes that I wanted to select. Sure. He was like, my sister, why are you crying? That is how I started saying my story to him. He was like, so what are you doing now? I explained everything to him. He was like, okay, what are you buying now? I just said, please just check like a small trouser and mm. a shirt for my son. He said everything was 50 rand. So sure. I bought those things. He was like, come back tomorrow. Mm. I want you to come here. Maybe tomorrow you'll be better. So when I got to his shop the following morning, he had already selected like six black bags of clothes for me. Mm. So getting there, he was like, you can select more, select more. But remember, I don't have the energy and the charisma. My mind is still focusing on something else. Mm. I never thought he was giving them to me. So as I was going, I was like, I said, carry those things. They are for you. I don't have anything to give you right now, mm. but I want you to go and start all over. Maybe when you go and start seeing people, that is how things are going to change. Mm. So from there, I would walk with those clothes from one saloon to the other. Mm. I started selling the clothes. It finished within three days. Mm. I went back with the money that I got from the clothes. I'm like, Daddy, this is your money. He was like, no, it's not my money. Mm. This is I gave you something to start all over, but you can now be stocking from me. The profit, you can keep it mm. because I don't want you to be depressed. You have such a handsome boy that you need to keep and you cannot keep asking money from anyone. Mm -hmm. So that is how I started selling clothes. I managed to open my own flat mm. from there. I started, um, before, as I was selling my clothes, I told my sister that this is a very good business. Let's do it together. Mm. But she would not do it with me. I would carry those clothes by myself and go and sell them. So after the time, I think it was after three months, she just told me that your spirit around me is not good. Yeah. You must find a place to stay. Your sister? Yes. The one you took from Zimbabwe yes. to come and study here for five years? Yes. She was like, your spirit around me is not good. Please just find somewhere to stay. So I had this container that I was keeping money. You know those containers that mm -hmm. you keep money? I'm like, okay, I think my money is well enough to open either a one bedroom or one and a half. Then I'll find someone that would rent the other room. Mm -hmm. Then me and my child would be in the other room. I went to city property. I got a flat. That is how I just told it that I'm leaving. So with a few things, those small, small clothes that were there, she didn't even escort me to go and see where I am going to stay. She only hired a bucket for me. Mm -hmm. And she paid 100 rand. She was like, you can go. So that is how I left her house. I started staying by myself with my child. As I was selling those clothes, the business was going very well. Then from there, each time I would go out, I would advertise that I do hair. So I remember I was by the gate one day. I met these two girls. They were school girls. I'm like, I do hair. They asked me, why? Which number are you? That is how I started doing their hair, not knowing they're from Zimbabwe and their mother is selling caramel coated nuts. Mm -hmm. So from there, the mother said she needs a driver. Mm. She was like, can you drive a back? I'm like, yes. Now I'm like, okay, each time you're going for a weekend, I can drive your bucky, then take you to the market and come back. Remember, it's 350 to go, 350 to come back, which is 700. Mm -hmm. That is how my life just started boasting. She was like, now the driver that was driving for me is back. And I've been using him for, I've been uh, working with him for years. Mm -hmm. So now I can find something for you to do. She got for me a job with this other lady again that was working. Uh, she, she do the same thing, mm -hmm. but she's from Zambia. I started working with her. It was very nice. I saw places. Now, 
everything now just started to change. I was seeing places. Today I'm in Deben, tomorrow I'm in Cape Town, mm -hmm. maybe I'm in Limpopo. I was traveling, it was very nice. And she had this thing that whereby if we have all these markets that are making more money, after that we'll go for a holiday. Mm -hmm. I remember my first holiday was in Limpopo. We, bushed, we booked there, it was very nice. So now I was forgetting everything about him. Mm -hmm. Everything, now my son, I would make sure that my son is okay. I had someone that was taking care of him from the time that I was not there because markets sometimes, they're just from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. So from that time now, that is when I'm like, you know what, yes, I can continue working from here. For her, I mean, but it's not bringing something enough for me because my son's school fees then had gone up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they wouldn't give me markets. You know how it is now because we're a lot. Yeah. You would notice that this week she didn't give you markets and you're targeting that, no, I need to have markets. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what else do I need to do? That is when now I said, no, let me go back to doing hair because I'm, I'm so happy when I'm doing hair. Each mm -hmm. time I meet people, I'm always inspired by other people's stories. So... Mm -hmm. And from that time, I was like, you know what, let me cut my hair because I need to start all over. I felt like that hair, I've been having it for a very long time mm -hmm. and it's holding memories. Let me just start all over again. So I cut my hair last year because this is the fifth year now mm -hmm. after I, uh, we separated with my son's father. Mm -hmm. So from that time, each day I meet people, I'm always happy as I'm doing their hair. And each person that I meet, they become family members. Mm -hmm. And they've, some of them, they've known me when they're still school kids. I was doing their hair. Now they've become part of the family. Mm -hmm. So each time they would come to me either for advices or for whatever, for encouragement, you know. So I'm always happy doing hair. So from doing hair, I make my own body lotions. Mm -hmm. How I started making body lotions, my son had eczema. Mm -hmm. And that time I didn't have money. I'm like, okay, let me see what and what can I mix for him for the eczema wow. to go. Mm. So from that time, trust me, his skin now became more nicer. Mm. I would go out with him. People would be like, your son is very handsome. Mm. So he's the one that said, mommy, you know what? What you are doing, I think if you do it for other kids, people would come and buy from you. Wow. So that mm. is how you advertise my work in school. Even the teachers, I do the teacher's hair. Mm. He would say, mommy, please make flyers. He would go and give the teachers. He would be the one to tell his teachers that, you know what, your hair is not nice. Maybe my mother can come and wow. do your hair. You know? such a smart boy. Ne? He's very smart. Mm. He would tell me that, you know, today you didn't have a customer. Probably it's because you didn't pray. Mm. I want Fatai to come back one day and see me great. Mm. That is when I will remind him that you were never there for me. Mm. You were never there for my mother. Mm. So there's this particular day you saw him as well. He was buying airtime. It was last year. How old is he now? He's 11. Mm. He was buying airtime. The father was also behind him buying airtime. The father only greeted him. So for the first time ever, I saw him crying. I'm like, mm. why are you crying? He was like, mommy. So he just greeted me just like that as if he doesn't know me. Mm. Why is it like that? And I now told him that he was just in the shop like another person. Just don't put it in your mind as if it's your father that greet you. Just say it's someone that was behind you buying airtime. Mm. So from that time, as I was doing here, I now felt like, you know what? I may not be able to raise this boy alone. Let me contact him and tell him that things are not okay. Mm. You need to support him there. I took him to the social workers. He told them point blank that, let's just say the day that Lorraine gave birth to this boy, I died on my way to go <laughs> and see her. This boy was he not going to survive. He yeah. was going to survive. So they must just live a life whereby I'm not there. This guy is a douchebag. So from there, I'm like, you know what? Let me just make an agreement. You can come and see the boy and whatever. I was thinking that for the boy not to feel somehow that I, I deprived him from mm -hmm. seeing his father, he was like, no, let me pay first term. It was second term in school. So if I pay second term in school, definitely I will continue paying his school fees. I can come and take him. We can, I'm like, uh, co-parenting at this point, I've healed. Mm -hmm. Probably we can co-parent with this person. Mm -hmm. So after it was second term, last year during holiday, he just called me, was like, uh, my friend is graduating. Mm -hmm. So I need to go with Roland to Cape Town. I'm like, it's flight risk for Roland. Remember, you took Roland's passport away from me, mm -hmm. the birth certificate you tore it. And on the passport is a Nigerian passport. Mm -hmm. Is he having your name and everything? It's flight risk. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to agree to that. He said, why is it I am the only one who wants to benefit from this child? I'm staying with this child 24-7. Mm -hmm. And he can benefit. I'm like, it's either you take it or you leave it. Mm -hmm. You cannot go with him. If you are to take him to Mainland and bring him back, it's fine. Not outside. How will I know that you have taken this child to Cape Town? He was like, the fact that you're not trusting me with this child, definitely I'm not going to pay school fees. Mm -hmm. I'm like, since the f this is the fifth, uh, fourth year last year, 
that you left and you only paid school fees for only one term for him, it's not going to make any difference. So either you leave him, you go to Cape Town and come back and you still see him, or else you leave it like that. He was like, never call my number again. Sure. So from that time, uh, I never even bothered calling him because sometimes I would have those moments where I would just look at my child and say, so this guy is just leaving and he's not bothering about where his child is and whatever. Mm. So I would just call him or whether it's a dif- with a different number. But I've stopped all that. I've here in a certain way where I'm like, you know what, there are other single mothers out there mm-hmm. who are really making it mm. and they are surviving with their kids. And he also he tells me that, mommy, you can never mend a broken glass. Mm. Start somewhere. So each time, even when I'm doing business, I'm always happy. Yes, things cannot be, um, you can never have enough money to sustain yourself. But the only thing is if you're sending your child to school, you have roof over your head and you have little savings. I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So now as I'm doing hair, I make my body lotions. I'm happy about it. I'm happy. And when they see my child, sometimes I don't believe that it's my child because I feel like he doesn't deserve to be my child. He is way more clever. Even when he's talking to people, you know, he's very brilliant. Even in blessing. school, you know, he would mm-hmm. tell me that today you didn't pray. How many clients did you have? Just three. Mm-hmm. No, man, you have potential of making more. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you pray in the morning? Probably you could have worked more. And mm-hmm. he would remind me that before you go out, you need to pray. Mm-hmm. You know, he told me that if you had to die today, rather don't look very, very nice out there. Yes, I'm not saying look bad, mommy, but have savings. You are the only person that I have. All the relatives True. neglected you. Mm-hmm. But now I need to have savings so that if you wake up dead tomorrow, I'll know, okay, this is what my mother left for me. Mm-hmm. So everything that I'm doing now, I know, okay, I'm saving for this child. School is imp- most important for him, you know. So that's what I'm doing right now. Sure, my sister, your story, ne? <laughs> and for me, the whole time when you, are, when you are sharing it, I'm thinking being able to go through all of this in a, in a foreign land. You know, like I feel like maybe when you, if you were at home with all the people around you, Maybe it was going to be a bit better. Um, no, for me, uh, there's a time that I thought... My mother used to come here, actually. Mm-hmm. She would come. My husband would buy groceries for her and whatever. She would go home with big, big things. Mm-hmm. By the time I called her and told her that this is what has happened, she never called me one day to say, mm-hmm. What's happening? Mm-hmm. The only thing that she told me is I must keep begging him so that he comes back. Sure. So it's one thing whereby I have tell myself that I don't have a family. Mm. Everyone only wanted me when I was having. Sure. Now that I'm not having, they don't value my opinions. They mm. don't value me at all. So I'm just living a life whereby I'm alone with my child. You know, I have this belief ne, that um, it is very necessary in life that sometimes the, the people you are dining with on your table, ne, mm-hmm. your table has to be turned upside down. Yeah, that's so very that true. those who are holding on to your table, when it's time for it to be turned back and sit in its position, those who are remaining on that table during that time, those are mm. your people. And yeah, that's meaning very that true. if that table has nobody by the time it has turned back into its own position, then you are on your own and you move like that. Because a lot of us have people surrounding the, our tables because our tables have never turned upside down. Yes. So it is necessary true. for the tables to be shaken from time to time so that when they are falling back into place, you will know this one is for me or I don't have people. Mm. So if you never go through difficult times, <coughs> you, you, you never really know if you have people or not. Yeah. You understand what I mean? So I feel like your story, for me, it, um, it inspires me because you, my sister... <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot, you know, but for you to be able to still be here today, yeah. It's 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 by God's grace. Yes, it's by but God's grace. But I would grace. love for before you can even get to the point where you share with us the um, your details of where people can get you with what you're doing, I want you to maybe just share your parting words, ne? What would you advise somebody right now who is still in the situation that you were in 4 years ago? Uh, it's only one, it's just a few ways that I would say whenever you don't feel comfortable in a marriage, it's rather leave when it's mm. earlier than when it's too late because it's more like a timing bomb. Mm. They would know exactly where to hit you mm. and you wouldn't be very aware of that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man, thank you so much. I feel like that's something that is needed by, every, <laughs> we, like we need to be spreading this gospel that listen, you need to stay in a place where you are wanted and if you are not wanted, you need to leave before you even hurt yourself. Because imagine, you could have been in jail by now because of everything yes. that you put yourself through. Yes. And what about your child? Where was your child going to be mm. now? And uh, even another thing as well that kept me going. Yes, there are some 
places where you would ask, let's say I come to you and say I need 500 rand, mm -hmm. you would give me 500 rand because I'm hoping to give you back. Now when things are not working well, you lay a case on me to say you didn't bring back my money, but you're not going to prosper and everything. Mm -hmm. It's not because I wanted to do those things, but I was just trying to make ends meet and things were not working well. Mm -hmm. But it gave me the courage to say, let me work harder. Mm -hmm. Because now as a single mother, even if anyone you tell them that you're a single mother, especially men, they wouldn't respect you. They think you want to take advantage of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear you. Uh, where can people get a hold of you for those who want to be in touch with you? Oh, you can get hold of me on Aisha Lorraine Tarambo on Facebook and on TikTok as well. I'm there with the same name, Aisha Lorraine Tarambo. Then on Instagram, I'm Aisha Lorraine Tarambo as well. Okay, so that's yes. where people like, can get the, yes. the body lotions. Yes, the and body the, lotions and what hair. I do, the hair, the wigs that I sell as mm. well. Oh, thank you so much. I'm going to visit your page, even though we still have E2 hair studio. <laughs> and your hair looks very beautiful. <laughs> thank you so much. Well. We're going to visit. I'm gonna visit your page, you Definitely. know, for the times when I need when my hair has grown underneath no problem, and I need I'm a, I'm a one one or something. <laughs> so no that problem, you can hook me up. But no then I really problem. appreciate you joining us. And before I even forget, I want to just say big shout out to Hydro Quench for sponsoring us with the water and a big shout out to Crown Liners for dressing me. Big shout out to E2 Hair Studio for the hair. Last but not least, a big shout out to Scent Studio for being our home. We'll love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.